in this video we will build a sudoku solver so we built a sudoku app in the previous video and in this video we will build a solver for it okay so it will be a follow-up of the previous video so if in case you haven't seen it the link will be there in the description so let me first show you how the solver will look like yeah so as you can see we are using the backtracking algorithm out here and this will give you some sense of what the backtracking algorithm actually is and we'll be writing the code for it so let me show you this in slow motion so you can actually see how the backtracking algorithm is working so let me just increase this delay time to 250 so here you can see that we are first inputting some value some valid value in each of the empty boxes and if in case that value is incorrect we backtrack and replace some previous value by a, another valid value so it is sort of like a brute force algorithm except that we are not checking each and every combination so if you see out here so right now we're getting all these valid values and once we get an incorrect value it backtracks and changes the previous values okay so let's dive into the code we'll discuss the backtracking algorithm as we write the code okay so we'll start with the previous code which we had and uh, the basic structure of the sudoku which we made in the last video and over there we'll remove this insert functionality because we no longer need to insert any number and i'll also remove the function call for it okay we'll keep the quit functionality and once we've done that we'll write the functions for this um, backtracking algorithm so we'll need just three functions for it so which are def is empty so this one checks if the function is if the um, if the position of the grid which you have supplied is empty or not then we'll have is valid so we have to check that whatever number we are choosing is a valid number or not okay and the last one would be sudoku solver so this will be the main part of the algorithm so let's first write the is empty function okay so we'll be passing some number to this function and we just have to check if that number is zero or not okay so if num equals zero then yes it is empty so we'll return true if it is not zero then we'll return false the grid contains numbers from zero to nine where zero stands for an empty position in the grid okay so if the number is zero we'll return true that is the grid position is empty now we'll have to write the is valid function so is is valid function basically checks that whatever number we have supplied is a valid number considering all the constraints of the sudoku so if you remember there are three constraints of the sudoku row column and the box okay so if these three constraints are satisfied then only it is a valid number okay so first we'll check for row okay so for i in range so we'll have some position okay so the is valid function will take the position of the number which you're inserting and the number itself okay so we have to check now if that particular if the row which contains that position if that row contains the same number or not if it contains the same number then it is an invalid number uh, i'll take 0 to i have to take 0 to 9 so i'll take length of grid 0 okay so to give you some perspective this is a grid okay if you can see here we have to check for the row okay so th if this is the row in which we want to check so you can see that if we view it visually from the gui perspective the x coordinate would change and the y coordinate would remain constant okay and we know that in between the graphical interface and the grid variable which we have in a code the x and y values basically swap okay so because of that if we have to make the x coordinate as variable and y coordinate as constant we'll just do the opposite you can also uh, uh, understand it by thinking that if suppose the position was 4 okay the position was 4 comma 3 okay so we'll go 0 1 2 3 4 okay so we'll go to this row okay and we have to check all the elements of this row so we'll have 4 comma 0 1 2 3 and so on so we have to check all those positions and we have to check if the number which we are checking here 
is present at those positions or not okay and the same logic would apply for column also so if we take this column the x coordinate would remain constant and the y coordinate is changing and that would get reversed in the case of our grid variable that is why we'll have grid of i comma position 0 because this particular first index would change and the position 1 would remain constant okay so i hope that's clear so we'll have if grid so we'll have position 0 comma i equals num so if any element in that row is equal to num that is an invalid number okay so we'll return false okay so we'll check column now so for i in range 0 to length of grid 0 if grid i and position 1 equals num return false okay so these are the conditions for the row and the column and now we have to check the box or the subgrid okay so for that what we'll do is we'll first get the block number from our grid okay so we have nine boxes in our sudoku right so if we can get which box number we belong then we can traverse in that block and check all the elements if i'll divide my position by three to get the block number so x is equals to position zero by three into three and y is equal to position one divided by three into three so this gives us the block number and the block number instead of keeping it as zero one two i'm keeping it as zero three six so suppose if we are in the last block bottom right block then we have to go to uh, six comma six in the x and y okay okay so now for i in range zero to three or j in range 0 to 3 now why 3 because a block would contain 3 rows and 3 columns okay so if grid x plus i and y plus j equals num so this is x and y would indicate the starting position or the starting of that uh, box and then we are traversing it by i and j okay i goes from 0 to 3 and j goes from 0 to 3 if this is the case we return false okay so these are the three conditions which you had to check and if all the three conditions are passed then we return true okay so we have completed two of the three functions which we had to do now let's go to the sudoku solo function okay so the sudoku solo function would basically be a recursive function so the simple logic is that we have to uh, traverse the grid the sudoku grid from left from top left to bottom right we'll visit each of the empty cells and we'll determine if a particular number is correct in that place or not okay if it is correct in that place we'll insert that number and move ahead and if in the future we find that we arrive at some position where no number is being valid then we will backtrack and remove this number which we had inserted okay so first we have to traverse the grid because we have to check each element so for i in range 0 to grid 0 okay for j in range 0 to length of grid 0 okay so if if it is empty okay so if the if the cell is empty which will be grid i comma j then we'll check from 1 to 9 and insert all these elements inside the cell okay one by one let's say one is a valid number we'll insert one and if we find that the sudoku is not solving by keeping this one we'll come back check for two let's say if two is invalid then we won't put two and check for all the future elements we'll simply discard two and then we'll check for three four and so on so for k in range 1 to 10 okay we don't want 0 here so if is valid so 
so we have to check if k is valid in the position i comma j so if k is valid then we'll have grid i comma j is equal to k so we are assigning k okay once we have done that we'll call the sudoku function again so suppose we arrive at a place where no element is valid then we'll return back here so in that case we have to remove this element k so grid i j is equals to zero okay okay so this is actually the basic uh, fundamental of our um, algorithm but we actually need to visualize the results because otherwise you won't be able to um, see for yourself what is happening okay so this is the my font because we'll require font for blitting a text onto the screen so value is equal to my font dot render str of k true and we'll have a black color okay now blitting this win dot blit value and the position with proper formatting would be this okay so this is just some proper formatting uh, to make the text appear in the proper place so it is basically j comma i okay so the reversal of coordinates and this 50 is basically the length of the small cell okay and this 15 is just for proper alignment by game dot display dot update by game dot time dot delay okay and now we'll also write the code for removal of these conditions so we're drawing this rectangle with the background color to cover the text which was there and pygame dot display dot update okay so this is basically we are covering that text with a rectangle so that is how we are removing the value onto on the screen and here we are removing the value in the back end okay so i guess this is done but there is one issue that there is no exit condition in this okay because ultimately you see that the code will reach the sudoku solver and uh, when the final um, element is reached it will just go back and delete all the elements so we have to add an exit condition out here so let's have a global variable called solved and make it as zero okay and once this is solved we'll uh, make it as one and if solved is equals to one return okay and we'll have a reference also for this global salt and yeah we'll have to call the function as well and we have to uh, pass the window argument also since we are drawing on this window uh, out here win.blit and let's call this function out here so let's run this okay so we got an invalid syntax out here so what's the issue okay okay so there's a problem with the is empty function i guess okay so when we are running this loop for k in range 1 to 10 so whenever there is we arrive at a case where no value is a valid value we have to return okay so that is the basic concept of our backtracking algorithm so we forgot to add this return statement out here return so if there is no valid value we'll return back okay so then only it will go and change back the previous value right so that completes our algorithm and i'll just run it and show it to you okay so this is our backtracking algorithm i had reduced the delay to 5 milliseconds if you want to see it uh, you can actually make it 15 seconds uh, 15 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds i'll have 15 milliseconds okay so this is the backtracking algorithm i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time